Hi there, I'm Christopher Harrison. I'm a senior program manager inside of Microsoft Cloud and AI. And recently we released a whole series of videos to help you get up and running on JavaScript. So if you're already familiar with another programming language and you're looking at JavaScript and you just wanna get started, we've got a full video series for you. Now, one of the comments that we received uh, was inside of the async await section. So we are, in fact, reading the comments. And the feedback was based around the demo that what we did was we used set timeout, which is a relatively like common way to describe async await. And the feedback was it wasn't necessarily real world. And that's totally a fair criticism. Now, a little bit of behind the scenes information here is we did run into a sequencing issue that uh, we had packages later on. And so it just made it a little bit tricky to try to put together a, a real world-ish example for doing async await. Well, if you're familiar with packages, and if you're not, you should definitely go check out the videos. Um, we can now take advantage of a package. The one that I'm going to use here is uh, called node fetch to be able to now simulate something that's going to be a little bit more uh, real world. Now, node fetch is one of my favorites that it allows you to get that same fetch style of syntax, but inside of a node. That fetch is a built-in utility for browsers to be able to make HTTP, HTTPS, or REST calls. Now, the uh, call that I'm going to make here is going to be out to this great little testing service uh, called HTTP bin. And HTTP bin will do all sorts of really neat things for you that it will give you random data, it will do echo, it will give you specific responses. So that way you can go in and use this to test uh, different calls that you might be making. Now, the one that I'm going to use here is a service called delay. And delay is going to take one parameter here at the end with the number of seconds. So I'm going to make two calls here uh, for three seconds and for two seconds. So this is now going to simulate my long running operations. And if we think about this, this is something that's going to come up uh, quite frequently, that maybe what I need to do is I need to write an image out to blob storage, and I also need to write something out to a database. And I could go in and do those sequentially, but I would really like to be able to do them both at the same time. Or even if I'm just making one call, I would like the process that's running my application to know that, hey, it can pause or it can you know, put me on pause and be able to do other things. So that way I'm going to get better performance. That's really what this is all about. It's all about being able to get better performance and not having to stop everything because we're making long running calls. So in my case here, I'm going to be making two calls. I'm going to make a call that's going to take three seconds and a call that's going to make uh, that's going to take two seconds. And if we do some math here, three plus two, of course, equals five. So if I ran these uh, sy synchronously, I can say that word correctly. If I ran these synchronously, then this would take roughly about five seconds. Now, in reality, it would take a little bit longer because there's a little bit of just build up and tear down for making the, the call. So it would probably take close to about six seconds to make both of those calls synchronously here. I don't want to do that. I want to do these asynchronously. And fortunately, Fetch is going to support this out of the box. That what Fetch will give back to me is it will give me back a promise. And remember that the way that a promise works is it behaves like an IOU. This is basically a fetch saying, hey, I'll get back to you. I know that you made a request. I'm going to go off and, and do exactly what you told me. And then once I'm done, I'm going to give you the opportunity to now go get that data. Now, just calling something that returns a promise in and of itself does not stop my code execution, 
which is why I can now stack both of these one on top of the other and go get a second promise. So now what I've done here on line six and seven is I've now made all, I've made both of these calls back to back here. So both of these are now executing at the same time. Now, at this point, I could then go in and do whatever else it is that I might want. So if I, you know, maybe wanted to uh, print out, maybe let's go in and just add in that code here real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console log um, uh, starting operation. And maybe I come down here and I say console log um, and um, other work. Or maybe I, you know, console uh, log. Um, please wait or something like that, that I go in and, and do and do that. So I can go in and do that. And you're going to notice that both of those are going to print successfully immediately, because again, getting back a promise is not going to stop execution. It's not going to stop until I call a wait here. And so now when I call a wait, this is now going to signal, hey, wait until this is complete. So it's going to wait whatever the remainder amount of time is for that three second operation to complete. And then down here, it's going to do that same thing for that two second operation to complete. Now, three, of course, is greater than two. So when that line of code right there runs, when, when this right here runs, it's actually going to be instantaneous because it will have already received the response. It's really just waiting for me to go retrieve that value. So now if I was doing something in the real world, I would then go ahead and, and act upon whatever response it was that we got back, whatever data happened to be returned here. But in my case, I'm going to print out the amount of time that it took that I set up a start time up there. I'm now going to have my finish time and then I'm going to display this out. So what we're going to notice now when we run this again, because this is running asynchronously is we'll see that starting operation, other work, please wait instantaneously. And then we're going to notice the pause. And then it's going to tell us that this took a little bit over three seconds. Again, remember that it's a little bit of tear, uh, build up and tear down time to, to make the calls rather than this taking five seconds. So if I run this uh, node um, uh, app.js, it's going to go ahead and, um, oh, I need to save the file. There we go. Let's try that again. Sorry about that. Uh, let's now run this. And now you're going to notice that boom, 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 starting operation, other work, please wait. And now it's pausing. And then now it comes back and now it tells us that the operation took that three seconds. Again, if we were running this synchronously, then that other work and please wait would not have been able to execute. And this would have taken at least five seconds to run. So hopefully that helps clarify async await and gives you a little bit more information about how this works and when you're going to use this.